Okay, and welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Today we're going to be continuing our coverage of Main Gear's uh, do-it-yourself equipment. And we're going to be looking at their T1, their Epic T1000 uh, phase change thermal interface material. Main Gear was kind enough to send us a kit for both the 1155 and 1156 socket as well as for the 2011 socket. And we're going to be taking a look at these on our um, ASUS P9X79 Deluxe and also on our Maximus 4 Extreme motherboard. These two motherboards have, were, are the ones that have gotten us the highest overclocks with both our uh, 3960 uh, Core i7 as well as our 2600K. So we're going to go ahead and get these kits out. We're going to get them everything put together and we're going to show you what they can do. Our comparison is going to be to the other liquid cooling systems that we used before which is the Corsair H70 as well as Intel's liquid cooling system. But we're also going to do a baseline comparison against the Main Gear Epic water cooling system that we have, the Epic 180 with the uh, uh, thermal interface material we used before which is an arctic silver ceramic so let's go ahead and get everything broken down and we'll get it set up we'll kick everything off with the uh, P9X79 Deluxe and the Core i7 uh, 3960 okay so now we've opened up our uh, T1000 face change thermal interface material and we're going to take a look at the contents inside Main Gear provides you with a few nice things including some lint free cloths. These are dry wipe cloths intended for cleaning off not only the CPU but the CPU socket and the mounting brackets as well as your your water block. They provide you with some cleaning material. This is actually a degreaser that's going to remove any thermal interface material, any fingerprint grease, all of that that's off of there. You get a pair of powder free gloves, some q-tips, always nice. And then of course you actually have two of what they call their engineered thermal interface material. These are ETIs. This is what you're actually going to apply to the CPU in order to cool everything down. Now they also provide you with a three page instruction manual that walks you through the steps that you need to take to get everything set up. We're going to go ahead and go through those steps right now with you. The first thing Main Gear recommends, and of course we recommend that you follow this, is to take one of the four lint free cloths and you're going to clean or wipe the top of the CPU lid. This is going to remove any kind of grease that might be here as well as any thermal interface material that might have been left over from your last installations. When you're doing this make sure that you're careful of any of the pins. You don't want to catch these with this cloth and pull any of them up. That could uh, pretty much ruin your day. So once you're done with that then you're going to go ahead and sit this aside. You'll do the same thing with the CPU itself. Just go ahead and wipe it off so that there's no visible thermal interface material on it. And of course you would do the same thing with the, the uh, water block with your cooling head, which we've already done, but we'll go ahead and give it another shot here real quick. The next thing that you're going to do is you'll actually go ahead and you'll put these gloves on because you don't want to get any additional fingerprint grease on the CPU or the, the lid or the block. Right, these uh, actually look like they're inside out, so. so we'll go ahead and get these on. If you do use this a second time, just make sure you get gloves that are powder free as you don't want to get any of those in there and you know, of course if you're allergic to anything like latex then you want to be careful with that. So now the next thing you'll do is you'll take one of these lint free cloths again and you're going to get it saturated with some of this material. This is considered a trial bottle so you will be able to get additional from this but you'll go ahead and get the cloth saturated and as soon as you get it saturated you want to immediately go ahead and clean whatever it is you're cleaning. So we'll attack the CPU surface right here real quick and that's going to remove any grease from the top of this CPU. And we'll also move straight over and we'll hit our CPU lid or socket lid to remove any grease. So the other thing it's doing here is it's also removing the uh, all of the uh, ink and everything that was on here that tells you which of the levers to use first. So that's kind of neat. It's really cleaning this off very well. All right, then of course you'll go ahead and you'll hit your uh, water block as well just to make sure that there's no thermal compound grease or anything else on there. Now as you can see we pulled a lot. A lot of that's going to be the ink but that's also some of the grease that was left over from our last use. Let's go ahead and hit this water block one more time to make sure it's completely clean. And again as always when you're cleaning that that lid, make sure that you uh, watch those pins. So you can see we just got that off of there. 
Now the next thing you're going to go ahead and do is you will go ahead and mount your CPU. Go ahead and leave the gloves on. As once again you're trying to make sure that you don't put any additional grease of any sort on here. So let's go ahead and get this lined up. Alright, that's lined up. Get that closed. And it might be worth it to hit this, all of this, one more time just to make sure you get everything cleaned off. And it looks like we are still picking up a little bit of grease. Hit it with the cleaner side of the cloth. Alright, and let's get that all set. So let's close our bottle up. We don't want this to evaporate, it will evaporate quickly. Now the very next thing that we're going to do is we'll pull out one of our ETIs and then we'll close the case back up. Now these ETIs, if you look, when you look at them, there's a top liner and then there's a bottom liner. So obviously you're going to remove the bottom liner first, but you want to make sure that you have this lined up correctly. When you have the liner, if you notice, you'll see all of the material is up here at the top. This is what's actually going to fit, uh, change phase and fill in all of the cracks, all of the crevices in both of the CPU as well as your water block. This needs to be along the back of the CPU. So it'll be along this area here. It won't be where you see the round hole in the CPU that's right up here in the front. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and remove the back liner. It's also important while you're doing this to make sure that you do not touch anything but the liners or the black edges of this uh, ETI. So then you'll go ahead and line this up. Get it lined up on the CPU lid. And looks like we've got everything here so we'll get this pressed down I want to make sure there's actually a square on here that shows you the outline of the CPU and where it should be when it, everything's all said and done so we missed, uh, missed the mark by just a little bit so we'll pick this up and move it back into place it's not the easiest thing to do so you want to make sure you get this done on the first try and that's got everything into place. Now as soon as we do this, the one thing that we need to make sure that we do is we're going to go ahead, we'll leave the gloves on, but you should immediately mount your water block. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that after we pull that top liner and that'll complete the mounting. But we, uh, we've got a couple of things we need to do first which includes putting in our mounting screws for the the Epic uh, 180. So we'll go ahead and get that done and we'll see you over on the test bench. All right, we're back over here on the test bench and now we're gonna complete our next steps. The last step that we're gonna do is of course we'll remove this top liner, which we peel that right off. And then we're gonna immediately mount our water block. And once we get that done, we'll go ahead and get everything fired up and we'll see what kind of temperatures we get. Alright, so now we've got everything set up and we've powered on our uh, system here. And now on the first run, what's going to happen is the system is going to need to heat up. So, and it's going to have to be under load so that that thermal interface material, the phase change material, can actually move and flow properly across the CPU surface your standard idle temperatures are just not going to be enough. We need to put this under some sort of load. So we're going to go ahead and get it powered up. We're going to get Windows installed. This is a brand new install and we'll see what kind of temperatures we get after we get this under load. We'll, find, we'll follow it through its initial installation all the way through to uh, its final melting and what it does once everything's in place. Now if you take a look, we've got our ASUS motherboard up here and we've got our BIOS up you'll see that it's actually sitting at around 59C. That's pretty hot just coming right off of the gate. But that's also because we don't have, this is not actually adjusted yet. So we've got to get this installed, everything put together and get it under some sort of load to allow it to properly melt across the surface of the CPU. 
So let's go ahead and get that done and we'll see you once we get Windows taken care of.